The remote, pristine waters of the Pacific coast of Canada are the home of the largest and longest-lived burrowing clam in the world, the gooey duck clam. The name gooey duck comes from the Nisqually First Nations people of the Pacific Northwest, meaning dig deep. The clams live in gravel, sand, or mud on the ocean floor at depths of up to 100 meters and are very long-lived. The average weight of a gooey duck is about a kilogram, although huge ones as big as four and a half kilograms are not uncommon. Gooey duck as old as 140 years have been recorded at the Pacific Biological Station at Nanaimo, B.C. This long lifespan means that the fishery must be carefully managed in order to sustain the biomass. Gooey duck from Canada are harvested by members of the Underwater Harvesters Association, or UHA, who co-manage the fishery with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. The UHA manages and monitors catches, tests water quality, and routinely conducts surveys on the biomass or gooey duck population. The department works with the UHA through what we call a collaborative agreement, our joint project agreement, which outlines all of the projects that we have ongoing for the upcoming season and also for the longer term. It includes all sorts of things that we work on with them with regard to our science and our research programs that represent the integrated fisheries management plan we build on an annual basis and also our enforcement programs. They have some contribution to the way that our conservation and protection officers work. Our association voluntarily pays for most of our management programs. We have everything from water quality sampling, PSP monitoring, validation systems on the boats. Uh, we have biologists and scientists paid for at the expense of the UHA. Taking part in the management of the fishery is something the UHA takes very seriously. IVQs, or individual vessel quotas, have enabled lucrative high-end markets in Asia to be developed a contrast to the early days of the fishery. Our fishery originally started in the, in the mid-70s, very low-value product, and it eventually it reached to what it is today, which is a high-value specific markets, mostly in China, and that's been developed in association with Chinese markets and Chinese buyers that we deal with in Vancouver and mainland China and Hong Kong. Our association is very motivated to uh, promote our product. We do probably two or three uh, specific market shows for seafood. We have several initiatives to keep our product still recognized as a high-end product. Gooey duck are harvested by divers working from sturdy, long-range vessels in remote areas of the coast. They work at depths of 10 to 20 meters, relying on air pumped from the boat through a hose or hookah, and a dry suit for protection from the bitterly cold water. They also wear 25 to 40 kilograms of lead weights so they can work easily on the ocean floor. The divers walk or run along the bottom looking for a gooey duck show, the tip of a siphon or a dimple in the sand made by a siphon. When a diver finds a show, he uses a stinger, a nozzle with high pressure water pumped down from the boat to liquefy the sand and mud around the clam, then pulls it out and places it in a bag clipped to his waist. Yeah, how's the quality looking? Oh, good deal. Many divers use high-tech communications to stay in constant touch with the boat. Just off our starboard side right now, just off the stern. Hey, yeah, man, okay. Once the diver has filled his bag, he signals the boat to hoist it up. On the boat, the crew carefully empty the bag and begin to pack the gooey duck in cages, making sure that they cannot roll or damage themselves. Each clam is banded to keep the shell from gaping and help it stay alive, and the cage is hosed down to keep the contents clean and cool. The cages of gooey duck then go into insulated holes from here, the gooey duck is taken to a landing station for validation.
The gooey duck is validated dockside. Then refrigerated trucks take the fresh live clams to registered buyers in Vancouver, where they are graded and carefully packed in coolers to be air freighted to Asia usually the same day. Detailed documentation of the product is maintained throughout the entire shipping process. Every pound that's landed and exported out of the country is, is recorded and logged so that we know exactly where all of our product is going. Right, so you can track all of the landed product back, even to the restaurant table in Hong Kong or Shanghai or wherever it might end up. You can track it right back to the harvesting vessel. The water quality of the areas open for harvest is carefully monitored to ensure that harmful algae are not present. Monitoring gooey duck populations is also a priority. And the available biomass is calculated based on surveys, which the UHA conducts in conjunction with the fisheries department. And these surveys look at the densities and age grouping on specific beds. So what we do is we go out and we check out different beds each year, and we do transect surveys on them, and we do uh, some counting at show factors, like how many gooey ducks are showing at one time, because they don't all show at once. Based on this, we get a pretty good idea of the population of goodex that's out there. A huge part of the process that we go through with our consultation with the UHA and the collaboration on the management plan is having a look at the numbers that the science department has produced in the way of quota options for us and interpreting them into a usable management plan for the coming season. So we currently build a total allowable catch based on a harvest rate of 1.2 to 1.8 percent and that TAC is divided equally amongst all the license holders and a quota is allocated to each vessel to fish. Recruitment or natural reproduction is enhanced through seeding operations conducted by UHA members. The UHA has an enhancement program where we're entirely self-funding uh, an enhancement project where we're putting uh, juvenile gooey ducks back into the bottom. And when harvested, that product is it will be approximately two pounds and probably about eight to ten years old. Studies show that this method of harvesting has no significant long-term effects on the structure of the ocean floor, the small organisms that live in the sediment, or the plants and animals on the surface of the floor. There has been independent studies done on the impact of harvesting on the environment. In particular, they were looking at the sediment composition and the myofauna, or the small species composition and abundance. What was found is that the impact of harvest is very minimal and that it's short-lived. So there is some impact on the sediment composition, but it recovers quickly. Uh, the abundance of, of uh, small invertebrates in the area can be affected, but it, again, recovers quickly. The fisheries managed extremely conservatively, to say the least. We like it that way because we're in the business for a long time to come. You know, our market is a very particular market in you know, mainland China and Hong Kong, and it's a high-end market. So for us, it's very important that we have a steady supply of good quality gooey ducks. Ship all over the world and it's very, very popular. And a tight schedule and a network of skilled professionals guarantees freshness to overseas customers. For example, gooey duck harvested in the Strait of Georgia on Monday are packed in Vancouver on Monday night and could be on the first plane to Hong Kong or Shanghai on Tuesday. Once at their destination, they are returned to water in live tanks and are ready for display and sale. <laughs> Gooey duck are popular in sushi and sashimi, hot pots, and other seafood dishes. Gooey duck from Canada come from the clean, remote waters of the coast of British Columbia and are renowned for their high quality and the care with which they are harvested and packed for the highly demanding seafood markets of Asia.